Like I said, certification is just a small part of this whole equation and it's just a fraction of what you need. And then Now, if you want to get into cybersecurity, carry on watching this video. I find myself repeating this advice to so many of my mentees and people I speak to, people that approach me, and they often ask, what's the secret formula? What did you do? How did you get in? And to be honest, there is a secret formula to get into cybersecurity, and I haven't really talked about it on this channel yet. So I've decided to make a video. And no, this isn't a, these are the list of certifications you need. We're gonna be covering all aspects of what is required beyond just certifications. Keep watching while I unpack and reveal everything you need to get into cybersecurity. It's important to set the scene. I just wanna talk about cybersecurity content in general and share my thoughts about the types of content you see online regarding cybersecurity and be able to put that into perspective. So I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit just so you can properly compartmentalize and put that in the right place, just so you don't get scammed, confused, or put off the industry because there's a lot of bad content out there if you want to skip ahead then go for it now what i will say is the content you see online about cybersecurity, including my own isn't the whole picture there is so much more that doesn't get published or content doesn't get created about necessarily. There are things online about it, but it's not necessarily done by your favorite cybersecurity creators or whoever you might be following. What I have found through my whole career in cybersecurity is there's this breed of like undiscovered geniuses within the industry. And often they're just the type of people that just hate social media and content creation. However, they will watch the space and have ghost accounts so they can stay relevant and stay up to date, but aren't necessarily creating content or courses or boot camps or anything you might see. They're just out there silently protecting your data and other companies' data. And I'm talking about like cryptographic geniuses that are like math polymaths, whatever the word is for a math genius, and the types of characters you might see in a movie with like photographic memories. And these kinds of characters will always, in my experience at least, be completely anonymous, offline, not in the public eye, and very few of them will ever create content. Now what I'm trying to tell you with this is that what you see online about cybersecurity doesn't necessarily reflect the real experience you have if you get into the industry. I would estimate that only 1%, if not a lot less, of actual cybersecurity professionals create content online and publish guidance. There are so many more of us and other security professionals that you just will not hear of or see unless you get the privilege of working with them. So just keep in mind that all the content I'm talking about that you'll see in the security industry is a very small percentage of the general opinion of everyone in the industry. And you've got to think the smartest cybersecurity professionals did not grow up with social media. They would have started 30, 40, 50 years ago before Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of that was even a thing. So there's a lot of cybersecurity professionals who are not active online. That's the first thing you need to understand. All opinions of anything you see from a cybersecurity content creator is actually a small percentage of the total people within the industry. The second thing is, in terms of setting the scene, is that popular cybersecurity content creators on Twitter or YouTube or wherever you might see them aren't necessarily popular because they're brilliant in security. Of course, some are and some are really smart and they create content, but that's actually a minority of a minority. Most content creators are only really popular because they're good at SEO, they're good at marketing, they create really good thumbnails, but generally they'll have like a surface level understanding of the in-depth expertise and speciality that is needed to operate in day-to-day -day security. Of course, they can still add value to you, but you just have to understand that those people aren't popular because they're brilliant in cybersecurity. They're just good at marketing themselves and creating content and social media. Of course, they're famous content creators, but are very intellectual, very experienced and have in-depth knowledge 
and expertise and speciality in specific areas of cybersecurity. But yeah, that's a percentage within a percentage. There's only a few of them that are actually massively popular. Most of the really good content creators that actually have that in-depth knowledge aren't actually that famous and are a bit, if you know, you know type of thing. And they've got a lot of respect and value around them. And your content creators will know about them, but they're not necessarily the people who will rank to the top of your search engines when you're looking for them and I please don't think I'm putting myself in that category I'm still a relatively humble beginner within the industry I've only got a few years of experience really less than five years so just to put that into perspective I don't put myself into the category of genius that you do see or that I mentioned before however I do try my best just to be accurate another thing is that a lot of content creators are genuinely just quite negative and you shouldn't take any of them too seriously don't take what you see online in general but especially in regards to cyber security when it's specific advice too seriously you should always balance that with other other information and make an opinion based on that at the end of the day we're all just offering advice from the knowledge we have at a particular point in time coming from a particular point of reference and understanding based on internal biases we might have and that's probably going to change in five to ten years often opinions change people mature etc also most content creators only talk about their area of cyber security and you have to understand what that area is so you don't get pigeonholed into committing or learning something you might not necessarily be interested in and wasting your time cyber security is a vast industry with like eight major categories and then within that you can have dozens if not hundreds of subcategories of specific specializations within that so understand the route that a content creator is trying to push you towards it might be one specific area of cyber security as opposed to a more general approach and they might completely ignore other areas i've spoke to some cyber security professionals who are very good at what they do but they just have completely no idea Idea that another area even exists in the way it does or the job market or the day-to-day -day responsibilities and roles so if you were to ask them how can I get into cyber security or if they made a video about it their perspective is going to be on that one specific thing and likely ignore a lot of important areas that might be better suited to you as a person so please don't take everything you see as a generalization about the industry understand the compartment or the area or the domain or the speciality that piece of content is about and not all cybersecurity content creators are bad there's a lot of good ones and I owe my career to a lot of cybersecurity content creators but I've also seen a lot of rubbish that confused me earlier on and also I still see now and it angers me a little bit because it's just so ridiculous sometimes or so narrow-minded and I can tell that comes from a lack of understanding to some degree it's nothing that I would follow regularly it just crops up here and there and some people will offer bad advice or they'll have bad takes or they're just trying to get you to buy a course that's not necessarily good for your career and they'll try and sell you a dream of pay for this or buy this and everything will be fine as long as you give me money so be cautious when someone's trying to sell you something look into what they're selling there's a lot of great stuff that a lot of content creators have put hundreds of hours in to create to produce that teams have that is actually good content worth buying useful pdfs useful guides amazing boot camps etc but on the other side there's a lot of bad ones too so try and filter out and do your due diligence to make sure you check what you're buying don't waste any money on anything that isn't established unless you're confident and have done your research into that just for an example like yesterday and this is the stupidest thing i've ever seen in cyber security when it comes to content creation i'm not gonna lie there was someone selling a cyber security affirmation package of getting into cyber security now obviously i didn't buy the package i didn't look into it i just read the title but essentially it's like phrases you say affirmations to help you get into the industry and no disrespect to anyone that believes in affirmations spirituality religion or you don't believe in anything at all you might be atheist that's cool i'm not attacking people who believe in affirmations but what i am saying is that is not something anybody should ever try and profit from you're literally selling people a dream and taking advantage of people who are trying to create better lives for themselves for their families provide for their children and you're selling them something that 
you cannot even guarantee will work or even add value. You're just trying to take advantage of something they could get for free. And trust me, that comes from a spiritual person. I believe in God. I can't even count the amount of times I was on my knees praying to God as a Muslim, making dua, which is a form of prayer, asking for guidance, knowledge, opportunities to be in a better position financially for myself and for my family. I don't think it would have been possible without God like anything if you do true believe in God. The thing is though, I would never ever try and profit and package the specific prayers I made to God or to whatever somebody else might believe, whatever they did, and sell them as a PDF to make money in the cybersecurity industry. But some people might do that. And I mean, that's just one crazy extreme. But a person had a significant amount of followers and what seemed like a lot of people bought that package. So it just baffled me. Essentially, you can Google affirmations you can look at that stuff for free you can you know if you really believe in it i'm sure it's not hard to come up with phrases to speak things into fruition if that is your belief but paying for anything like that is just baffling to me and the other thing is you know belief faith spirituality is a huge part of the equation however you cannot just be at home praying and not doing anything and hoping opportunities will come your way i don't believe god works like that you know if you were to just sit at home praying for a cyber security job it's not going to happen you have to put some effort in you have to try your hardest and pray alongside that too or say affirmations if you believe in that or anything else you may do on a religious or spiritual level anyway while on other creators i have seen many people online that have like only really worked for one company internally facing for a period of time and not even as a consultant who would see like hundreds of different environments or teams and work with different people they've just been doing the same thing on repeat for however long now i'm not saying everyone who's worked at one company in their cybersecurity career has nothing of value to say i have worked with geniuses who fall within that category who've just never left the organization and who regularly give like amazing talks and advice and mentor people but what i am saying is you have to understand the perspective they are coming from just take everything you see online with a grain of salt and do some research i think it's also important with the things that i've mentioned to just say ignore the negativity don't rise to it if you do spot any of these things or any other things just be amicable ignore it and get past it and sometimes it's difficult trust me i know like the other day i seen this guy ripping into the cissp certification and criticizing it saying it's not worth it. He doesn't respect anyone who has it. He doesn't see why it's so valued in the industry. And there's a few comments agreeing with him, saying that it shouldn't be the gold standard for cybersecurity and whatever. And as someone who spent over like a year and sacrificed evenings, early mornings, days away from family, days away from friends and social life and put weight on because I'm losing gains, I was really offended. And I just wanted to comment and argue and just tell him how much... I disagreed with him like I was mad and then I ignored it and then it got worse because <laughs> then I started to overthink the comments and what was being said and I questioned my whole CISSP journey and whether I wasted my time and maybe the certification was losing its credibility in the industry or it's not worth much anymore and and those kind of comments hit deep and they're just bouncing around my head and I couldn't even concentrate at some points to be honest and then I just thought hold on a minute let me just do a quick little bit of googling went on indeed and a few job boards and I just typed the certification in as a skill and just seen what was available and I seen many many jobs asking for that certifications offering good money like every recruiter it director security director and their dogs were asking for cisp so it kind of made me feel better then i just completely forgot about it however my point is i decided not to engage not to waste my time or energy and that's the mentality you need to have and in fact you need to have a better mentality and not be affected by something like that in the first place so if you're committed to something just carry on and ignore the haters but yeah that's my little rant setting the scene over now we'll actually get into what you need to get into cyber security i just feel like it's important to paint the picture before getting into this but yeah let's go i will say is take notes maybe rewatch this make sure you do your best to implement everything everything I'm suggesting. Firstly, immersing yourself in the industry. Now, what I mean by that is you need to have a dedicated social media RSS feeds that are specifically created to thrive
throw cyber security content at you. You need to be seeing it everywhere you go. When I first committed to getting into cyber security, I deleted all my social medias. I created a YouTube specifically following IT and security content. Did the same with Twitter and Reddit and LinkedIn. And I don't really think I had anything else. I literally got rid of Facebook, Instagram, anything else that was a distraction and fully immersed myself. So anytime I pulled out my phone or any notification I got that wasn't messages or calls or whatever was cybersecurity content that was adding value to my life, to my career, to what I wanted to do. So I'm not saying you have to do this forever, but I do think there needs to be a period, especially at the early stages where you're completely immersed and you're kind of understanding how to keep your finger on the pulse and know what's going on, know what things are changing, know what's best, etc. And you need to gamify this as much as possible. So you've got some great platforms like Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, Volm Hub, plenty of others. I even found some terminal games on the phone that I just downloaded just to get better at Linux. And it was like the old school terminal games. And even though those weren't specific Linux or cybersecurity commands you'd use, it was just getting familiar with the environment and getting used to it. So yeah, I definitely think that immersion needs to happen early on and it's the foundation to the next steps that we're going to be talking about. Now the other thing I will touch on and I won't dive deep on this, this is not a top five certification video or anything like that, this is more overarching. So certifications, education, understanding other areas of IT, yes you need to commit to learning, it needs to be formal, you can mix in with some of the gamified learning you're doing on try hack me and hack the box etc or other relevant gamified learning and there's also boot camps, there's plenty you can do, but you need to find a good certification, find a good learning path and just go for it. So like I said, certification is just a small part of this whole equation and it's just a fraction of what you need. Often people will be like, if you get this certification then that certification, then that one, in this order you'll get a job. It doesn't work like that. People don't care often about your certifications unless they're amazing really valuable ones and often at the entry level they're not and there's hundreds and thousands of people with that same cert so the other things I will mention are the things that you need to focus on especially if you already have some entry level certifications and these are the items that are going to set you apart and make you more hireable so reading 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 the next one is you need to read a lot and of course you need to read cybersecurity blogs cybersecurity books relevant content on social media that's one side of it but I'm not talking about that that is a given that's just falls under the bracket of education and immersion in my opinion you need to be reading a lot but I'm talking about books on success business productivity taking better notes confidence communication marketing social media AI anything and everything self-help books stuff that will make you a better professional stuff that will make you smarter stuff that will add value to your life one of the biggest improvements in terms of my cybersecurity career was reading how to take smart notes I'll link that in the description but that book honestly allowed me to capture all my cyber security knowledge in a very smart clever database where I can access all my notes and it's made it so much easier for my day-to-day -day work and has actually made me smarter because I have very tidy and organized notes in my online database that I can take anywhere with me. It's on my phone, it's on my laptops, it's wherever I need it to be, quickly access it. And I've broke everything down into so many categories, etc. But that was just a result of me reading the book. Now, there's other books that I've read that have significantly helped communication, but yeah, reading will definitely help your career. And it's something that you should be doing in any profession, continuously get smarter, continuously learn, especially self-help books, productivity style, etc. if that's your thing. If not, even just fiction, random books, just about stories of yeah whatever it may be those books will help with your language with your communication with your creativity and there's so much knowledge that can be derived from books so i would say reading is something that you have to incorporate in your daily life just to improve as a professional in general but more specifically to cyber security you might want to mold specific books around that or pick things that help you there 
but yes reading 100 you have to be doing it next thing and to be honest this is the most important thing so please pay attention is showing your work if you're looking for a job in cybersecurity, you need to be easily discoverable you need to be able to showcase your work your capabilities your skills professionally and you need to be able to network properly through your creative work to truly succeed so initially you need to build a platform to attract people towards you build a strong online presence showcasing your work what you're learning what you're thinking about things you've learned your interpretations opinions whatever it may be of course you can mix it in with more general social media but there needs to be a dedicated space for you to professionally write about make videos about about cyber security related things, especially things you've learned. And if you think about it, I don't know if there's any study or stats on this, but this is why people in marketing and recruitment can genuinely just move and shift jobs very easily, especially within cyber security and any other industry they want because they know how to market themselves. They're good at social media. They understand what it takes to be in front of recruiters and hiring managers and directors and how to network and communicate communicate all the technical skills that can be taught i would balance the technical skills with marketing yourself and all this is about being discoverable showing people your skills and what you're capable of and people will hire you based on that i've had mentees that i've just got jobs after i've just said start a blog like you're really smart but I know that but recruiters don't know that and nobody else does so just do it and they have and they've got jobs so yes you need to be regular and consistent with it and you also learn other skills along the way which are valuable so yeah regular be consistent you can do short form you can do long form you can do both youtube videos create a website write some blogs get it out there and do not underestimate the value you can add with anything you're learning or anything you're doing or any problems you're having my most watched video was an issue i had with expanding the kali linux disk space within vmware on a windows machine and i was trying to figure out for a few days read a ton of stuff did so much research couldn't really find a lot about it a lot of failure a lot of issues later i finally cracked it repeated the issue i thought you know what i'll make a youtube video on this hopefully this might help someone else's experience in a similar issue and that sounds so minor and so specific to it like a tiny issue with Linux and that video has done very well considering how niche it is last time I checked over 20k views I also had a website at the time which is something I did when I was starting cyber security just to show my work blogging but I don't do that much anymore in terms of blogging anyway but yeah create content show people your knowledge when you're in interviews you can share this with your employer even if you don't have any certifications it shows you're very passionate about what you do and you actually love cyber security and you take it seriously and you've got a willingness to learn and share your knowledge and you're kind of documenting your learning journey publicly and people really love that and it's worked wonders for me for everyone else I know who does it so yeah and if you don't want to be completely public with it you can also create almost like a private portfolio that you share with your application with your CV with your cover letter whatever and then you can say look this is my methodology for doing this this is how I conduct a penetration test this is what I've learned so far about this tool this is what I think about this standard this is me trying to understand these controls etc etc there's so much value you can just show your employer by just having content that you can share with them so don't underestimate it definitely create content it will set you apart if you've got five people applying and all of them are really good and well certified or whatever they're going to take the person who's got the best attitude willingness to learn not everyone needs these super tech geniuses etc they just want someone who is willing to learn has a good attitude and has some basic skills and understands the fundamentals for most jobs of course there's some specific specialities that aren't entry level and require experience and knowledge but we're not talking about that we're talking about getting in so in terms of getting in content creation whatever you know trust me document it blog about it make videos tweet reddit discord whatever there's also medium quora linkedin there's so much different platforms you can use to do this and this crosses over with networking so network with the people who are following you who are taking your content in and also network as much as you can by connecting with people and there's a whole you know tech community on twitter there's one on linkedin 
this one on Reddit. I know every platform you will have a little community that you can try and be a part of and try and engage with, reach out to people, offer to be a mentee, offer to add value to their life if you've got something that they might need or advice for something else. Like if they're interested in fitness and you can tell they've just started a fitness journey, just reach out to them and say, oh, this is what I know, this is what I've been doing and try and find that commonality if they've got the same dog breed as you or whatever it may be. People build connections off things like that and you'd be so surprised how important it is just to remember somebody's dog's name, their children's name, you know, their family, where they're from, the country, etc, etc. There's so many things you can do just to find that commonality, to begin that conversation, maintain these relationships, build bridges with people, leave good impressions on them, try and attend in-person events if you can. It's a bit different now, there's a lot of remote stuff so you can do it remotely, you don't even have to leave your house to make these connections as you did back in the day but yeah try and add value and find commonalities offer help and another big big thing for cyber security cvs cover letters your linkedin profile get good at them then get better and then get even better and never stop improving. LinkedIn is a great tool. A lot of companies hire exclusively from there. Build a profile, connect with people, aim to have a thousand connections at least. Just connect with random people in the industry, reach out to them, speak to them, ask for their time. You will get ignored, you'll get rejected. I certainly did coming up, but it's just part of the process and it adds to your credibility and you start to gain an understanding from just things that people will share and talk about and it could result in opportunities. Also buy the premium version of LinkedIn if you wanted to and take the learning paths on there. They're quite good and they're nice tidy certificates on LinkedIn that will show recruiters and people that you're interested, especially if you write about it, blog about it, and post about it on LinkedIn, just along your learning journey, what you're doing, what you're learning. What I will say is never lie on your CV or cover letters or anything like that. You will be exposed in five minutes in an interview. As soon as someone speaks to you and asks you certain questions based on your answers people know if you're an idiot or not if you know what you're talking about so when it comes to your cvs your cover letters your whatever it is your applications never tell lies be honest and transparent about how much knowledge you have and what you don't know and it's always better to try and just say you know what i'm not quite sure about that but i'm willing to learn or i'll have an answer for you tomorrow i'll look into it i'm happy to go on this course no i don't know anything about that but i did see someone post about that and there was a thread about how to learn that tool or that specific thing when i go home tonight whether you hire me or not i'm going to look into that and i promise you if we have a conversation again and you ask me that same question i'll have the answer answer for you. People prefer that dedication. It shows your attitude as opposed to what you know and it's better not to just, yeah, just don't lie. Simple as. Recruiters are also good. Try and find a good recruiter. Of course, there's some bad ones, there's some good ones, but they can take a lot of the pressure off you. And if you're willing to learn and you can demonstrate the skills, etc., and they have the roles available, some of them will sort the whole thing out. All you've got to do is just, just show up to an interview and they do everything else for you, literally. So yeah, look out for recruiters too on LinkedIn as well. That should be part of your connection plan. Try and connect with cybersecurity specialist recruiters, especially the more experienced ones. And another thing is just volunteering now there's there's so many open source projects there's opportunities all around you even like schools or local hospitals or care rooms or doctors or whatever it is go in there ask if they need help ask if you can shadow the it team if they have a security team of course there's a lot of places you can't go in for specific reasons mainly to do with privacy and it's a bit dodgy if you want to but there's also places that will be open to that idea of you helping out especially if you have connections lean on them and you Use them to help you get some experience or some idea of what it's like to work in IT and security. And within your CV, be good at framing your skills in a certain way. I worked in takeaways and chip shops for a long time and I honestly thought, how will this ever help me in cybersecurity? But I've had very senior, well-respected, 50-year cybersecurity veterans commend me for that. And it was weird the first time it happened because they say, oh, you've worked in chip shops, takeaways, service industry, shop assistant force whatever it is I can tell because you've got really good communication skills and I really deeped it for a minute and following that I've kind of thought about it a lot and you kind of pick up a pattern where people who've worked in these kind of customer facing service roles dealing with different people like shop assistant type 
roles. They're very good at communication. You're talking to different people from every walk of life on a daily basis, possibly dozens, if not hundreds or thousands of people regularly. You have so much to add in terms of communication. And that skill is really needed in cybersecurity. Being emotionally intelligent, being able to read the room, being likable and easy to get on with will make you more hireable than some techie nerd who knows everything there is to know, but is very antisocial and is a prickly character to work with. Nobody likes working with difficult people. So be amicable, be polite, have good communication skills. And if you don't work on that, I think that's such a vital key skill in the corporate world in general. And that alone to the right person at the right time will get you hired alongside a willingness to learn you can't just be good at talking you have to want to learn too i don't want to sell you a dream or oversimplify all of this that's a lot of things to do and cyber security is competitive at the entry level especially depending on where you live and the opportunities around you however if you do this all properly and start somewhere and get better and better and better over time and just refine things just minor improvements over time adds up it doesn't have to be perfect cv perfect content perfect whatever social media from day one it's a learning process and if anyone tells you they've got all these things figured out they're lying to you i certainly don't it can always be better it's just about small improvements over time and don't laser focus in on any of these things and think oh if i'm just really good at social media or whatever that i'll get a role it's a balance now if you don't want to do all of this and you decide to go against the bald man's advice then it's just going to be significantly harder to get in and you'll have to be super smart super technical and at least be able to reflect that in your cv and applications at the very least or just have mad connections that can get you in and yeah you don't have to do this forever this is a very important thing as well you just have to build this and do enough to get you in of course i would recommend you carry on and do this throughout your career as it will continually improve your profile and add value especially if you're posting regularly which you should be doing when you commit to content but yeah once you're in you can decide to drop all of this delete your website or whatever you know your social media profiles you're in now your experience should carry you if you can continue to upskill, learn, etc., and then you can just focus on maybe the LinkedIn and CVs and cover letters for your next roles. But once you're in, you're in. It's just hard to get into the industry. And these are the items that will put you ahead. So I'm conscious this is a long video. So if you've got this far ahead, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. As part of my own commitment, I've also decided to create a Twitter. I'm going to try and join and possibly take over tech Twitter for cybersecurity. So yeah, I'm going to be posting regularly on there too. So it's a brand new account. I've just started. I've had ghost Twitter accounts that I just used to follow cybersecurity content. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't also commit to something in terms of self-improvement and making my profile on content better not just posting here on YouTube so I'll be posting to YouTube once a week and Twitter I will try and aim for three times a week if not more so follow me on Twitter too to get some value there if you found some value in the video please drop a like and share the video so others can receive this information and consider subscribing too I post every week on here and my channel is focused on cyber security and tech if I had to summarize everything I just said into a simple equation it would be marketing times value added times skills equals cybersecurity jobs. So each of one of these things has subcategories which I've talked about and you have to understand. So take time to digest it, maybe rewatch certain parts again if I was talking too fast and don't focus on one thing or the other. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I read every comment and try and reply to as many as I can. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Good luck on getting in. So I hope to see you soon in the cybersecurity industry. Hopefully we'll work together at some point over and out and I'll see you in the next video.